What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for data science. In today's episode we're going to learn about matplotlib and also how to professionally plot functions in Python. So let us get into the code. Now as always the first thing that we need to do here is to import the libraries that we're going to need. In this case numpy again as np as we already know it. And today uh, we're also going to import matplotlib. So matplotlib is the library that we need for plotting. Uh, and we're going to say import matplotlib.pyplot because we only need that submodule pyplot of matplotlib. Uh, and the alias that you usually assign to that is plt. So we're going to say plt instead of matplotlib.pyplot or instead of pyplot. So now what do we need to do to plot a function? We cannot just go ahead and say matplotlib take this function and plot it. What we need to do is we need to give matplotlib some x values and some y values. And a function is basically just a mathematical uh, thing or expression that takes a value and outputs another value. I mean, it doesn't always have to be one value. You can also have uh, three inputs and five outputs or, some, or something like that. But uh, basically a function maps x value to y value, especially in this case right now. So what we need to do is we need to define a range of uh, x values and then put it into a y value function, then take both of these results, both of these arrays and input them into numpy, so, uh, sorry, into matplotlib so that it can plot the function because it's actually not plotting the function, but the, the values of the function. So the values of the input in combination with the values of the output. So let's not talk too much about this. Let's just start doing x equals. Now we can use either the linspace function or the a range function that we already know, or you can just go ahead and say np array and specify your own input list if you want to do that manually. But I'm going to use linspace and I'm going to say, okay, give me a bunch of values from, I don't know, minus 100 up until 100 and give me 200 values. So uh, actually, I think we need 202 to have this evenly distributed and distributed in the way I want it. But let's see. No, actually not. Maybe 200 is fine. I don't know. Or I need even 203 or 201. Okay, 200 is not enough. Let's see 201, I think. Or 3, that's the last thing. No, that's true. 201. So from minus 100 up until 100. So another way to do this, of course, would be np.a range. Just say minus 100, 100, and a step size of 1. Actually, this, this makes more sense because I wanted a step size of 1 from the beginning. So, uh, But now it plots up until 99. So let's say 101. And then we have the input value. So these are my x values. They're just inputs. They are not values that um, are the output of, of a function. They're not a function. They're just input values for the function. And the function we're going to define right now is just y equals... And you can just choose a function. You can go ahead and say x squared plus uh, 3x minus 8, for example, uh, or np dot sine of x. Just to find a mathematical function, in this case, I'm just going to say, let's say 0 0.5 times x to the power of 2 uh, plus 2x, 2 times x. And let's leave it that way. So for those of you who want to have this in a mathematical way, written down in a mathematical way, this would be 0.5x squared plus 2 times x, or 2x, sorry. This would be the mathematical function, so y equals that. Um, and now, of course, what we have is we have another array with the result of that function, or with the results for the given inputs. Uh, and now what we need to do is we need to use matplotlib to plot these things, because the plt.plot function that we're going to use takes an array of x values and an array of y values and then uh, combines them to plot the graph because every value has an x value or in a, in a two-dimensional two coordinate system, uh, every point has an x value and a y value. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pass all the x values and all the y values. Of course, they have the same size, so it's uh, it works fine. And then we're just going to say plot. And in the end, we're going to say plt.show because otherwise we're not going to see the plot. And basically that's it. 
six lines of code without the import it's even just four lines of code uh, and here you can see the function being plotted so this is the zero uh, here would be usually the y-axis but you can just see from minus 100 up until 100 all the values and this is the plot of this uh, function now of course I can also plot multiple functions in one bin window to do this I can call this y1 for example and specify a second function which is for example np.sign of x and then just go ahead and say plot x y2 and we have the same the same where is it uh, in the same window in the same graph we have the function down here of course it's so small that we cannot even uh, I can zoom into it here uh, you can see the function, but if I want to see this uh, a little bit better, I can just multiply it by 2000, for example, then we should see something of it. Yeah, now you can see two functions in the same window. Of course, I can plot as many functions as I want. For example, np.logarithm of x times, I don't know, 1000 or something. And then I can just go plt.plotxy3. Uh, this should work, hopefully. I hope we see something. Invalid value encountered. Okay. But you can still see the function here. Oh, of course, because I, I pass negative values. This is, of course, not okay. Uh, so it starts at zero. That's how you basically plot functions in matplotlib. Now, one more thing that I would like to show you is how you can design your plots a little bit. So let's just choose one plot to plot here, or one function to plot here, sorry. Um, and after specifying the X and Y parameters here, I can specify another parameter uh, with the style of this graph. So do I wanna have a black graph, a blue graph, a red graph, and so on? So default is blue, and if I want a red graph, I can just go ahead and type R. Uh, and then I can also choose, do I want a straight line? This would be just uh, a minus. Or do I want a dashed line? Or do I want some dots? So let's make a dashed line here and see what this looks like. Uh, you're going to see that it's now a red dashed line. So I can choose the design here. Now let's make a green pointed line. I think it's O. I hope it's O. Uh, yeah, it actually is, but you don't see it that well because it's too dense, but this is how the graph looks right now. So by specifying a string at the end of your plot, you can also choose how it, uh, what this plot looks like. So the first le the letter always specifies the color, so G for green, R for red, B for blue, and so on. Uh, y for yellow, I guess. Let's see. And then you specify also the characters uh, of the markers. I think you can also choose uh, this sign here for triangles, but I'm not sure. Yeah, actually works. So you can again zoom into it and you have some triangles here. Um, so you can play around with this and look at the matplotlib documentation to find all the different combinations here. So that was the first part on data visualization with Matplotlib. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really like making videos about data visualization and uh, Matplotlib in general. So because this is a topic that really interests me. So if you like this video, if you feel that you've gained something from it, if you feel that you've got value out of it, that you learned something, that you enjoyed it, please hit the like button for me. It helps me making more videos in the future. Also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more and feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. So. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.